So the Rode NT1A is an incredibly popular vocal microphone. In fact, I used it on this channel for around a year. However, I have now stopped using it entirely on this channel other than this video so you can hear how it sounds. There's a few reasons why I stopped using it, but before I get into those reasons, I do want to quickly say that this is by no means a bad microphone. In fact, it's an excellent microphone. It just doesn't sound that good in my environment. So the first reason I decided to retire this microphone is the awkward pop filter design. So this microphone is coming at a 45 degree angle to me from the side of my desk to do this video. And even if I was sat at my desk and it was coming in from the side at a 90 degree angle, you still could not use this pop filter. And the reason why is that the shock mount is designed with the pop filter mount right at the very front, which means when you mount the pop filter, it goes on the front like this. Now, as you can see, I'm not speaking into the microphone from over here, I'm speaking here. So this pop filter would not work at all, it would be completely useless in this position. Now this is the first thing I noticed when I bought this microphone and I was just like, well that's a shame because this is a really well built pop filter, but it's just completely redundant in my setup. So I ended up buying this sort of third party foam pop filter and as you can probably hear from this video, it doesn't do a great job of removing the plosives. And I went through tons of different options trying to find the right pop filter for this microphone and I just didn't find any. The best ones I found were like those really big pop filters that you clamp onto the side of your mic arm, but then you end up with this huge pop filter in front of your mic and I just didn't want that for my videos. The second reason is just the way that this microphone sounds and the way that it picks up certain frequencies. So I've noticed that this really exaggerates the highs. And although this does sound very clear and crisp, it doesn't really suit my voice. If anything, this microphone does make me sound a little bit higher pitched than I actually am, although that can be edited slightly in post. However, that's something I don't really want to be doing. I don't want to have to spend time editing my voice every time I do a recording with this microphone. I just want a microphone that I can record and it's pretty much good to go. Now, some of you may actually prefer how the Rode NT1A picks up my voice compared to the microphone that I'm using now. But for me, when I hear my own voice back in the edit, I much prefer how my new microphone sounds compared to the Rode NT1A. And the third reason is the fact that this microphone picks up a lot of external noise. So if it's windy or if it's raining, I have a window right here and this microphone picks up everything. Now that is not a fault of this microphone. This microphone is just not intended for a small office space like this, or even sort of like a medium to large office space. This microphone is intended for an audio treated room. Now, if you're a singer or a voiceover artist and you have an acoustically treated room, then this microphone will be fine. You probably don't have to worry about any of these things. But for me in this setup, this microphone just doesn't give me the results I want. So what microphone did I end up getting? Of course, it was the Shure SM7B. Okay, so one thing I noticed while editing this video is that you can hear this kind of hum in the background. And what that is, is the fan from my Atomos Ninja 5 recorder. Now you can hear this when I'm using both microphones, and that's because I've not added any effects, any noise reduction or anything like that to the audio in this video. So I've recorded two samples on the Rode NT1A and the Shure SM7B without the Atomos Ninja 5 in the room, and hopefully this will make comparing the two a bit easier. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. Bilbo was very rich and very peculiar and had been the wonder of the Shire for 60 years, ever since his remarkable disappearance and unexpected return. The riches he had brought back from his travels had now become a local legend and it was popularly believed, whatever the old folk might say, that the hill at Bag End was full of tunnels stuffed with treasure. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. Bilbo was very rich and very peculiar and had been the wonder of the Shire for 60 years, ever since his remarkable disappearance and unexpected return. The riches he had brought back from his travels had now become a local legend and it was popularly believed, whatever the old folk might say, that the hill at Bag End was full of tunnels stuffed with treasure. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Let's carry on with the video. There's a reason you see this being used in so many podcasts and in so much content online because it just consistently delivers great results. 
although it does cost three times more than the Rode NT1A. But the Shure SM7B is definitely worth it to me. It does a great job of removing all of those background noises that I mentioned earlier that the Rode NT1A struggles with, such as rain, wind, chair creaks, things like that. The Shure SM7B also has a built-in pop filter, so hopefully during this video you've been able to hear that the plosives aren't quite as bad on this as they are on the Rode NT1A. I mean, the Rode NT1A was popping pretty much non-stop during that previous section, whereas with the Shure SM7B, it definitely handles the plosives a lot better. This microphone also feels a lot less intrusive because you speak directly into the top of it, which means you have more flexibility with the way that you angle it. Whereas with the Rode NT1A, you have to speak directly into the front, which is more like speaking into the side because you can't speak into the top of it. And then we get to the audio quality. And without a doubt, the Shure SM7B definitely sounds better than the Rode NT1A. Although depending on what you're listening to this video through, you know, speakers, headphones, whatever, you might not hear much of a difference. But I can definitely tell that the tone of my voice sounds better with the Shure SM7B. But what do you think? Do you prefer the Rode NT1A for my voice or do you prefer this microphone? And I guess the big question really is whether or not the Shure SM7B is worth spending the money on when it's three times the price of the Rode NT1A. Well, for me, it definitely is. I don't have to worry too much about background noise and things affecting my audio recordings like I did with the Rode NT1A. When I was using the Rode NT1A, I really had to be careful with what I was doing, how I was moving, making sure nothing extra was being picked up by the microphone. Whereas with the Shure SM7B, I don't have to worry so much about what I'm doing. It makes turnaround times a lot faster because I can just record, throw it into Premiere, add a few effects and I'm done. Whereas with the Rode NT1A, I was constantly having to like edit out little bits of audio that were distracting, things I just didn't want in there. So there you have it, three reasons why I stopped using the Rode NT1A. And as I said at the beginning of this video, I don't think it's a bad microphone. In fact, I think it's an excellent microphone. I mean, a lot of professionals use it and for good reason, because it just sounds that good. But for this setup, where I don't have a sort of acoustically treated room or anything like that, it just doesn't perform that well. If you have any questions about the Rode NT1A or the Shure SM7B, drop them down below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, it really helps out my channel. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll get a notification when I upload another video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.